everybody, my name is Nicole Martin. Welcome back to my channel. I'm an artist and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Spectrafix. Now I work in pastel, watercolor, and a lot of different mediums and I'm going to insert some pictures now hopefully into this video just as some examples of the type of work that I like to do in pastel just so that you can get an idea um, and find out if you think this video might be useful or my opinion might be useful. So without further ado, we can go ahead and get into this review. Now Spectrafix comes from, it's claiming to be a company that prides themselves on being natural artist materials. You know, I, I wouldn't always necessarily put a lot of stock into that when it comes to most things because as we all know, just because something's natural doesn't automatically mean that it's safe and non-toxic or good for you. For example, arsenic is 100% natural, cadmiums, cobalts, leads, and a whole bunch of other nasty things. But I am very, very happy to say that the claim about this being non-toxic is absolutely true. If you turn over the bottle and you take a look at the ingredients, they're being very transparent and they're letting you know 100% what's in here. It's uh, some sort of a derivative of like a milk protein, denatured grain, alcohol, and water. That's it. So that's really nice to know. Um, I have some notes off to the side here and I am going to show you some examples in just a couple moments. Um, but what they say you can use this on is um, not only soft pastel, but also oil pastel, color pencil, chalk, graphite, charcoal. They even mentioned that it's okay to use on watercolor. Now I did do a test on a, a little watercolor painting that I did, just a little like watercolor sketch, and I found that it absolutely didn't smudge anything or do anything weird to that at all. Not sure why you would want to use it over watercolor, um, but if you're somebody who likes to work in mixed media techniques where you maybe want to put pastel over your watercolor, it is good to know that it is compatible. So the first thing that I wanted to mention about this is that it is fully archival and non-yellowing, which is really important if you're working um, in professional artwork or something that you want to sell. It is fully archival, it's non-yellowing, it doesn't have an odor. I do kind of get the, if you really take a whiff at it, I do get a little bit of the smell of the denatured grain alcohol, but not it's not anything heavy or anything terrible. If you're used to those kind of fixatives that are in that condensed air spray can, you'll know what I'm talking about. They're awful. You can't even spray them in the house and they're filled with all kinds of nasty, toxic horrible chemicals. So here you can see that I did a little test here on a scrap piece, let me just make sure that's in shot, yeah, of pastel paper. I went ahead and I did um, this side of the paper has nothing on it, it's been completely untouched. In the middle is one coat and on the right you can see that I've done two coats. I've got strips of some of the common colors that I might use as well as different types of pastel, some harder, some softer ones, and down here at the bottom this is actually a strip of pan pastel that I laid in. And here what I did was just a little generic kind of fur pattern to see how when I was layering how things would work and also I used some soft pastel, some harder pastels, some pan pastel, and pastel pencils all in there as well. One thing that I noticed right away about this fixative compared to other ones that I've tried in the past, which I really don't like fixatives and I've shied away from them in the past, is that it really doesn't change my colors at all. You could see that when you did two coats, it, some of the colors, like you maybe see a very slight darkening on that blue, um, and maybe just a slight darkening on that burnt sienna, but for the most part, it really didn't affect it at all. So I'm really, really happy with that. And then another thing with a lot of fixatives, for example, that Windsor & Newton one, and I'm not calling out any brands here, but it seems to take away your whites and your details completely. I didn't notice, especially here down here, I really didn't notice any of that happening. And I've done a lot of other tests that I have off to the side. Um, 
it really didn't a change or affect my work at all so I'm very very pleased to say that but the most important thing is as a fixative does it work well let's find out so over here like I said I did two coats I'm gonna run my finger across some of these strips and we'll see if it pulls anything up so here's the white I don't see anything on my finger let's go ahead and just run my finger right across all the colors and you can see that very little came off my fingers. Now it does say that you could do more than two coats but very 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 little. This is one coat down the center. I'll use a clean finger. Noticing a little bit more smearing there. Now it doesn't recommend that you do one coat. It does recommend that you do at least two to three coats but it's definitely going to be better than here's nothing okay you can see a lot more came off there so and it and if that was your professional piece of artwork that's smudged that's ruined now so you definitely couldn't be selling that so down here like I said I did layer a bunch of things on top of each other and I really did notice I don't think it changed the color did anything weird to it at all one thing I did notice that it did however which was a benefit for me is I felt like kind of like a makeup setting spray it took away that little bit of a powdery look and kind of enhanced the brilliance and the finish of my artwork so but other than that it didn't darken anything it didn't change anything so that's really really important if you do a very heavy coat and you soak the paper you will get some darkening here I have this little demonstration I did a beginners tutorial on this and I soaked this. I mean, I really soaked and soaked it just to see what would happen. You can see that it didn't take away my lighter colors, but it definitely did darken everything. Um, however, clean finger, nothing. Literally nothing. So the more coats that you do, the more protection that you'll get. And what I also did down here was they recommend that you do several light coats as you're working and building up layers to get a better adhesion and I did do that here so I did like a base coat an under drawing sort of thing I sprayed a light coat of fixative and then did some of the details of this fur on top and I did feel like I got a better adhesion so let's go ahead over here this would be a proper application because it's two coats which is what they're recommending you do a minimum of. I take my clean finger, let's see, very little, very, very, very little. Now there's no such thing truly as like absolutely setting, setting pastel 100% like you can varnish over acrylics or oils or something like that. But as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty impressive to me for um, a pastel fixative setting spray. And again, it works on several other things as well. So the price on this is going to vary depending on where you get it. The list price I found was $16.95 for this bottle. However, um, I got this for around $13 bucks on dickblick.com. There's always coupons and always deals that you can get on things. So I, I wouldn't pay full price if you can find it locally and use a coupon, you know, like at Michael's or something like that go for it. Now they say you should wait three minutes in between coats to let things dry, but that drying time is really going to vary depending on what surface you're using. Um, you know, if you're using like a more porous drawing paper, it's going to dry a lot quicker. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that be keep in mind that whatever paper you spray this on needs to be able to accept wet media. So if you're working on something like a like, uh, an unsanded kind of drawing paper like Canson Mitons, it's going to wrinkle and, and buckle and, you know, warp and all of that. You can help that, you know, reduce that from happening by taping your paper down, but it still will wrinkle and warp and things like that. Uh, also, even higher quality papers like the Sennelier La Carte, I think it's called, I don't use that paper at all in my work because it cannot handle any moisture at all. It's going to, you know, dissolve that sand and it's going to disappear and the paper would be ruined. So you need to make sure that whatever you're spraying this on is a paper that can accept uh, the moisture. So 
what else did I want to say? Oh, another thing about this, and this might be a pro or a con, it depends. Well, it, it it's not a, it's definitely not a pro, but it might be a con for you and a deal breaker. If you're looking for a, a spray fixative for your color pencil work or pastel work, and you're looking for it to have UV blockers in it, this one doesn't have that. So, you know, that might be a deal breaker for you. It definitely does not contain any UV blockers. Why is that important? Well, if you're working with artist grade materials that are light, fast, and stable, it might not be important to you. It's not to me. But if you are hoping for something to spray over, let's say, Prismacolor pencils to improve the longevity of those and reduce the fading, that this is not going to be this fixative spray for you. So we, we went over price, we went over the, the pros. Let's talk about the one and only con that I have to this fixative spray is the spray nozzle itself. It's not a good quality. It's not coming out as a really fine mist. You would be better off purchasing this and then transferring it into a bottle like this, an ultra fine mist sprayer because this one the one that it comes with it's very uneven it does apply bigger droplets and you know it still works it does but it's harder to get an even fine saturation with this spray now you know I'm not really too upset about that because you know it keeps the price down to um, you know, they, I guess they didn't want to spend a lot of money on their packaging and, and help to keep it As you can down. see, it really does work, and the darkening of the color is very, very minimal. It's nothing compared to those other, like, condensed air fixatives that I have used in the past. And I really do feel like it does work. I will be adding this to my arsenal of pastel supplies and I will be using it in my work. I'm going to definitely repurchase this. I would recommend it. Um, but the only thing to be aware of is, like I said, it doesn't have those UV blockers in it and the pump that it comes with, or the spray it comes with rather, it's not a good quality sprayer so you're going to want to transfer it into something else. However, I feel like the benefits really do outweigh the cons on this one. It does work it doesn't have a bad odor. It's not doing anything funny to my painting. And another reason that you might want to use fixative, especially if you sell your work, is you know when you frame it behind glass and you've got a nice matte border around it, you don't want that dust to be dropping down onto your white mat and ruining it. You don't want to worry, you don't have to worry about it being smeared or ruined in shipping, or even if you're just packing it away somewhere. I've been devastated to, you know, unwrap my drawings and find out that they've smeared or, or something has happened to them. But I've always shied away from fixative in the past because it's just, you know, they usually do horrible things to your drawings. So, but I'm really, really happy. I'm really, really pleased with this one. I would definitely recommend it. I would definitely purchase it again. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments for me below. And... As always, thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you would like to. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.